Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to take in a lace back gown at the side seams. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing but wants to get into the bridal niche? Well, this channel is for you. Welcome aboard. So today we're going to talk about how to take in a lace back gown at the sides. Now we're talking specifically about gowns that are a solid fabric in the front, then they have a side seam, and it is the lace or tulle back. They have been put together differently, um, usually, and, and they're put together several different ways. So we're going to get into all of that today, and I'm going to show you um, a couple of different ways that they can be put together and I'm gonna go through some sketches for you so you can see the way they've been put together and then at the end I have an actual alteration where we go above the machine and you get to watch me sew but first I have some exciting news to share for you. I got the coolest text message the other day. My sewing room is full. Um, this is my friend Amy. You'll see her in the comments section sometimes. She came for a retreat with me last summer and her business is booming and I'm super excited. So I wanted to give her a shout out and you guys can do that in the comments below. Also cheer her on. Her dreams are coming true. And then on another note, um, this fall, um, late September, early October, uh, another BSD bestie and I, we are going to go to New York City together on a sourcing trip. So this is another form of a retreat that you can do um, where you can kind of meet my peeps up there and we can go fabric and notion shopping. All right, so let's get down to business we are back to how to take in a lace gown. Now you can see how the lace is fed into the front part of the bodice. I've sketched this on the picture so that you can see kind of the way the seam allowances go. The lace is going to push forward to the front of the bodice. And this dress was put together the same way. The extra challenge with this dress though is that because this is more of like a strap rather than a back to the dress, if you get a gown like this and the bride um, is a few sizes smaller than the gown, if you were to take up all of that on the sides, it could really gobble up that strap and that back. Um, so you can't take it up at the sides in equivalent amount, um, the front compared to the back. I hope that makes sense. Um, you can't take it up that way as we would traditionally take a dress up. So I'm going to show you a sketch with that. And uh, what I want you to notice with this is, of course, all the seam allowances are facing the front of the bodice. Um, no seam allowance is going to come back or up and be shown in um, the tool layer. Okay, and so with this, when you take up the dress on the sides, that's, that'll be the first step to take it up. And hopefully that's all you'll have to do. But you take it up on the sides at the side seam, and you're going to take it up more in the front than you do in the back. So look at those dashed lines. That is how you would take it up. Um, and to gain access to that, you're going to go up the skirt and you're going to go through the bodice to get to that side seam. Um, now, the second way you can take it up if there still needs to come up just a little bit more is I would move to the center back seam where the zipper is and I would take it up at the zipper. Um, that way, for whatever forward motion you just gave those straps, you're going to pull back when you take it up at the zipper and kind of hopefully balance that out. Now, if the dress still doesn't fit, uh, number one, call the bridal salon and very nicely, hopefully, you know, actually just call them only if you have a relationship with them, <laughs> but call them and let them know just to be careful not to, not to sell this dress a little too big to brides to be careful of that. But I would go ahead and do a bust dart. And then if it still doesn't fit, you can take it up using the princess seams in the front. Now, this is a lot of alterations. Her bill is going to be huge. And so that's why you would want to let the bridal shop know that. Um, they're only going to want to go one or two sizes too big on a bride with this style dress. Otherwise, you are going to get distortion and a very high alterations bill. So again, here is this dress. Um, here are the seams. So you can kind of picture the way that it is put together. Here is how I would take it up first is the purple and then the pink is how I would take it up at the center back. 
and then of course the dart and then if you have to the princess seams I would let her know at the initial consultation um, if it was way too big, I would let her know there's probably going to be a little bit of distortion with this alteration and that you would do everything possible to not get distortion. Um, but it's just tricky. All right. So the example that I'm going to let you see me actually sew on has lace overlay and I'm gesturing here, uh, to show you where the seam is under the lace so there's lace overlay so we're going to first open up all that lace that's covering the seams so we can expose where we need to work and I want you to notice that uh, where the skirt is stacked layers here just remember it's just like every other dress when you alter the skirt and the layers are stacked like that you need to take up each layer individually at the side seam and then sew that back together to fit the skirt to them so essentially this dress and the other dress is going to be the same what you're going to do is you're going to have to take up the bodice of the dress to fit her take up the skirt to fit her and make sure where those seams meet you've taken it up the same amount so that they lay flush so this is definitely a divide and conquer kind of project like i said fit the bodice first and then the skirt um, now I have opened this at that seam that's running along under the bust and now I'm going to sketch over my photograph so you can see a little bit more clearly the way the seams run. With this dress, it's almost all straps and then they just have a little triangle of fabric under her arm. Um, if we took it up just using the seam right there behind the bust, she was losing too much of that strap. So instead... We're going to peel away that lace like I showed you, and we're going to tab to take up in that little V there. So we're going to tab that, and then we're going to take up the skirt. So the tab is in blue, and the skirt is in the fuchsia color. And then we're going to sew it back together and then put the lace back down. So I'm going to let you see me do all of that. Um, basically, when you get these lace back gowns, they are all put together together differently um, so that's why I'm clearly wanting to outline a plan for you where you can know that you have to take up the bodice sometimes different ways the main idea is to be careful of your seam allowance to make sure that wherever you put your seam allowance it doesn't show and then that the skirt is taken up and they're sewn together all right, so I'm tunneling through the dress. Somebody asked the other day about that. I want to show that part. Um, every dress is kind of different. Some of them you got a clear cut way to get through. Others, um, you got to be a little more sneaky to get through. So on a lot of dresses, I would grab right along that solid knit there. I would grab that and that's where I would take it up. But again, we have that tool triangle that we're working with on this dress so because we see such a variety in these seams I wanted to show you literally I'm showing you like three different dresses in this video just so you can know um, that they're all different and you can expect to have to come up with some different plans of action all right so what I'm gonna do first here is I'm going to take up the lining layer of the skirt And I'm going to speed this up for you so it doesn't get too boring. Now I'm going to work on tabbing that tool. I don't want to create a new seam and like I said when we pinched the seams that were there it pulled the straps in too close for comfort for her um, she lost some of the look if we chose like one or the other um, so the other option would be of course we could peel away the lace from both of the seams and just take them both up a little bit that would be perfectly fine too now where I'm gesturing is I'm showing you that I'm gonna stop a little bit before that waist seam and I'm saying waist, this dress is a little bit, a little bit higher waisted than normal. Um, so I'm just going to pull the tab back and then you can see 
that the the sizing aligns now the size the new size of the skirt and the bodice aligns they lay nice and flat um, and nothing is going to be seen with the seam allowance through the lace when we're done which is our goal for that all right so now I'm going to turn it wrong side out and I'm gonna sew that seam the waist seam back together again remember we undo the waist we take up the top we take up the skirt we put the waist back together then there'll be a little bit more sewing to do on the inside with hand sewing or a top stitch um, I only do a top stitch if we're gonna have a lace overlay that's gonna completely cover the top stitch the top stitch is a very strong way to do that so lastly as far as taking up seams goes I'm going to take up the tool layer of the gown I have peeled away all the lace and I'm going to show you this kind of different way of taking it up. What I do is um, I'll take it up, I'll, I'll sew down a few inches, um, and then I'll open the seam, sew down a few more inches, open the seam. Um, the, the reason why you'll see me do it that way, and I don't always do it that way, but the reason why I did it that way on this dress is because this tool was really liking to walk and I know you know what I'm talking about some of the fabrics really like to walk and they don't like to stay aligned so that's a way that I like to keep them lined up nicely without having to use too many pins is um, sew it and then open it like I'm doing now and sew it and open it now um, it would have been better if I had used my right zipper foot, my right invisible zipper foot instead of my left. It would have let me get a little closer to those lace appliques when I was sewing, um, but this, this worked out fine. Um, but that's not a great example that I'm sewing um, with the left invisible zipper foot right now. And of course this is sped up just to move things along for you. And now I'm gonna do that top stitch along that seam. This is good and strong. Um, as you saw, this dress has a knit lining. So that knit was sewn with a nine ball point. Actually, I think I used that the whole time on this project. Um, and that's gonna be most agreeable with the knit also. Okay, so the final stage of this is to pin down all of your lace overlay. Um, and you're going to kind of want to go back and forth with that. Don't just pin it all, you know, front to back. You're going to want some of the back to come forward and just kind of take turns kind of thing just to make it look nice and botanical and not have a, a severe line. So let's just go back over this again. Um, this kind is going to be fed forward toward the bodice. You would take it up from the side seam up at the bust area. And here is the um, sketch showing that. The blue indicates the sheer part, how that feeds forward. Right where those arrows are pointing, that's where you would take up um, from the inside. That's where you would take up that type of bodice. Um, this is the same scenario as you can see that intersection there can get a little messy um, So you just want to have super clean work there. I Hope that this has helped you if you have any comments or questions Please leave them down below. I would love to address those also if you sew this differently Let us know how you sew those and do keep in mind remember um, we all have slightly different techniques. Nobody's better than one another and we're all here just to share and learn more about sewing. And if this is your first time visiting us here on the Bridal Sewing Techniques channel, welcome. Here comes my channel trailer. You can learn more about what we do. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands.
you have found it.